Good evening and um, welcome to the Siyam Rambam and the Haskhala of the new cycle. Baruch Hashem, we're fortunate here in Manchester to have Rabbi Chazan with us. Rabbi Chazan, an incredible Talmud Chachim and one of the most dynamic and powerful speaker, speakers. Um, from those who are out of town, he's uh, the Rav, a very prestigious shul here, Holy Law, and has a huge influence on the community, Bichlal, a Nash community, and the wider community in bringing the Rebbe's words to the city. So uh, we're going to ask Rabbi Chazan to open the Siyam Rambam with Divrei Bracha. I'm muted. Good evening. First, let me note that this seal is dedicated to the Nishmas Haravachosid and Rachaleb, Rabchaim Deiver, the late celebrated Chosid, Ramatul Chain, who was dedicated to Levon Nefesh, Dovuk, Bilan and Dechayer, Rabbi Seyna Nizienu, and was Moisir Nefesh to learn Rambam every day, the Rabbim in a daily shir. And may his inspiration continue to inspire and motivate all of us and to bring Hatzlacha and Bracha for his entire Mishpacha until we're all reunited with our loved ones. Whenever we finish one of the Chamisha Chum Shetaira, the whole community, the congregation cries out, Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazek. We have to strengthen ourselves even in adversity, challenging, difficult times. And Svarim Akdashim say that the words Chazak, Chazak, Venis Chazek is Gimatria, Kiheim Chayenu, Va'erach Yomeinu, Va'amnege, Yoyma, Va'layla. Achizu comes from dedication to Torah. And this is especially true that the Shkacha Protest this year's Siyum is taking place at the beginning of three weeks of mourning of Avelis, in a period where all of mankind is going through a period of crisis, but we know whenever there is a seum, the frat, the seum of the Rambam, which is called all of Teir Shabal Peh, it's a gewaldige Eitzrotzen, the heavens open, a time of great brach. Let me just share with you a brief story I've said many times. I have a brother-in-law who has a brother who's not a Lubavitcher, but he's a businessman, very astute. He's an Askin, a communal activist, he helps people. And he was in Borough Park in the house of a Baba Verchosset, walks into his house, his dining room, and he sees a huge portrait of the Rebbe. And he's thinking to himself, where does a Baba Ver come to have a picture of the Babich Rebbe? And he asks him. And he explains that he has a Mishpacha, a Yilodim, a very large family. All of his sons, all of his sons in law are Ahuvim and Brurim, they're all Tamir Chachamim, Ben Eitaira, Rashi Yeshiva, Machanchim, Rabbonim. But Nebuch, he had one daughter, 14 kids are Baruch, Baruch Hashem, one daughter of Giglitchit, she was off the beaten track, and she went midechi el dechi, till she reached Mamnesh el Tachtis, and she's engaged to marry a Nanju, a boy who's none of our faith. They went to all the rabbis, and the Rabbanim, and Rosh Yeshiva, and they cursed the guy, the Shegas of Pegarin, Oak, and Gornish Gulf. Some, someone whispered in his ear, why don't you go and ask a bracha from the Rebbe? How do I meet him? He said, go by dollars Sunday morning. The fellow waited in the queue for a while. One time after a few hours, he meets the Rebbe face to face. He just, the dam burst, his emotions were, he started, broke down in tears. And he said, he told the Rebbe his story. And the Rebbe like, didn't bat an eyelash, gave him a dollar, bracha vatzlacha, a dollar for his daughter, the cause of his sorrows. And a dollar for her boyfriend to go. He told her. Fellow shocked. Comes home. He knows he's been drinking at last chance saloon. This is the last. Darachateva. And the Rebbe like wasn't me. Yeah, he gave a dollar. Doesn't make any sense. It's incredible. And he sits there. He tells his wife what happened. And both the father and mother start crying. Suddenly in walks the girl. And why are you crying? And they tell. he tells her the story. And she's delighted. She's over the moon. You see, even the Rebbe is masking to the Shidduch, so-called. And she 
looks at her mobile phone and she calls her boyfriend the guy and she tells him there's a rabbi who's a saint and a mystic holy man who has clairvoyant powers and even he seems to agree to our match and he gave a blessing and a dollar for charity for both you and me it's a good omen and the guy thinks a minute and he says you know after all we've been through together you still believe in this primitive superstitions you believe in rabbis and miracles and and rohakadosh this proves this, this shidduch is not massive. It's not for me. And he broke off with her there and then. And the message of the story is that the Rebbe's derech was not to curse the darkness, not to take a broomstick, but to shed light. And there's no greater oyer than a oyer of the light of, that one sheds by a seal. In fact, it's very fascinating. The Me'iri, one of the great Rishonim, was only revealed in recent centuries. He has pet nicknames that he calls all of the Rishonim. The Rif he calls Gedele Aposkim. The Ramba, the Rashi is Gedele Rabonim. The Rambam he calls Gedele Hamechaber. Literally, the great, the greatest of authors, of writers. But in Sforim it's brought. Why is he called Gedele Hamechaber? Because the Tachlis of the Rambam through Halacha, the Dvar Hashem through Halacha is to mechaber, to connect the chibur of heaven and earth. Starts off with the Yisoyed, the Yisoyed is for Abed Shem and he brings that down throughout, he brings down halach through halacha, till the end, he brings us to the time of Mashiach. And everything about the Rambam is connected to Geula. And therefore, G'dayle ha-mechabrim is gimatri Mashiach, Yadua, the Rishnu said, the Rambam had the Neshama of Mashiach, and therefore all the Meforshim on the Rambam all deal with the concept of Melech, Shara Melech, Yada Melech, Nishnul Melech, etc., etc. And the Rambam is unique in that he brings Hilchus of the Mashiach, Halachas, which are not Negea Bizman Agolos. And therefore the Rambam was born at a Pesach time of Gula, and his yard site is Chavteves, which also... We read about the Geula, the Rabbi Yisrael's Yisrael, which is Rosh Hashanah's Rambam. And Menuchus Kveh, the Rambam is in Tveria, where the Rambam Paskins. There will be the restoration of the Sanhedrin to inaugurate Yom Yisrael Mashiach. And it's fascinating, just just to give us food for thought, the Rambam was born Erev Pesach, Tav, Dalin Alofim, Tav, Tav, Tzadik Dalin, in the year 4,800. And 94. If you reckon the 4,894th Pasuk from Bereshis Bora, it's the Pasuk In fact, we have today the Rabbeinu Ephraim, one of the Rishonim, a colleague of the Rikeach, just after the Rambam. And in his commentary on the Torah, he asks, everything is alluded to in Torah Shabbat where is the remez of Rambam in Torah? And he says it's the last pasuk in the Chamisha Gomish Torah. Which the last pasuk deals with the El Chol Hayada Chazoko, the Chol Amira Agodla, Asher Osu Meishula Eini Kol Yisrael, which alludes to the Yada Chazoko, the Mishnah Torah, which is why the Rambam calls the Sefer the Mishnah Torah. The Meira Godl, the way it's pronounced, refers to the Meira, the guide that the Rambam wrote, which Meishu wrote, Le Eini Kol Yisrael, Asher in Israel, that our perspective should be one of halacha. And I have no time to elaborate, but the uniqueness of halacha is that halacha is mechaber oilimus. And therefore, we just read Shabbos, Pinchas zu elio, the Gemara says in Brachas, Pinchas ba'arba, Pinchas it says in Svarim, in Forshim, in Sifurnoi, all those great Svarim in, 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 in Sefer Ikrim. There's four Yisoydes in a person as Ramah Mizmairich in Perik Dalet, and Pinchas Yisoydi Abdeira. By Eliyo, why would he live forever? Because he had the chibur of all the Yisoydes. There was no snag, there was a mizug of his midas. How And the four Yisoydes are mechuvin connected the four Elamis and the four letters of Shem Avaya, and connected Shatra and Mizrush and Sod. And that is the uniqueness of Allah, to bring the Rots and Hashem down here in the world, to Megala the Dvar Hashem, the Halacha, Dvar Hashem, the Akates, as the Rebbe always said, they're bound up together. And therefore, just like when we read the last pasuk of the Torah, we we read it on Simchas Torah. Simchas Torah, we read Zayis Abrocha Sherbeirach Moshe, 
which is the gematria of all the brachas of Birchus Kehanim, as it's Mavur, it's Farah Maklishim. When we make a seim, we're mamshich, those brachas. Habracha is gematria dvar havaya, which is gematria yehi oir, though the Ebishter helfin, that by continued learning and haraving in Rambam, deeper and deeper, by spreading it through the Mesir's Nefesh of learning Rambam, we should be zoichataka to the emes of Simchus Torah, to the to the to, to, to live and to see the sechazena einenu the 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 mola oretz deyas havaya kamayim layam mechasim when we'll be reunited with Moshe Rabbeinu and Elio and Novi and the Rambam and the Rebbe will be dancing with Mashiach and the Beis Hamikdash Ashlishi b'Karov Mamsh. Thank you very much, Rabbi Chazan. What a wonderful psicha. Um, we have with us Rabbi Tauger who is going to make the seum for us. Rabbi Tauger is one of today's foremost authors and translators of Hebrew Lashon HaKedosh text. Very famously, he made the, the translation, a Mishnah Teira, published by Maznayim, translated Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, the Balaturim Chumash, the Kotesiches, and many, many other dozens of Hasidic works. He's a world-renowned lecturer, teacher, and mentor, and we're honored to have him make the seum for us. Good evening. The Rebbe emphasized that the seum Harambam, the Limuna Rambam, is not only a Lubavitch Yantar, but it's a Yantar for Klal Yisrael. I remember when I was going to the first seum Rambam. As I'm going to the airport, I meet a Gera Chassid. He says, oh, you're going to the Rebbe. Thank the Rebbe for the Rambam he gave me. I, said, I was amazed. What, the Rebbe gave you a Rambam? He sent you from New York a Rambam? He says, no, 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 the Rebbe didn't physically send me a Rambam. I always had a Rambam on my shelf, but it was never mine. I never picked it up and read it from cover to cover. And the Rebbe said to learn Rambam, I said, ah, aglai chazach, it's a good idea. And I learned it. Now it's my Rambam. So thank you for the, thank, tell your Rebbe, thank you for the Rambam he gave me. And that, I think, is a message for all of us. The Rambam is something which we can all take, we can all learn, we can all make part of ourselves. And that's particularly relevant to the seum conclusion of the Rambam, which speaks about Mashiach, which is something which each one of us is very much looking forward to, particularly in these present times of challenge. This, if there's ever a time for Mashiach, there's always a time for Mashiach, this is the present time. So the Rambam concludes the Mishnah Torah with a special two chapters, which he has as a unique heading for, Hilchos Mashiach. In other words, Hilchos Melcha Mashiach. In other words, the whole, the whole Mishnah Torah ends with Hilchos Balachim. And then these last two chapters have a special subheading, Hilchos Melcha Mashiach. He starts, Whoever doesn't believe in Mashiach or does not await his coming denies not only the statements of the other prophets, but also those of the Torah and Moshe, our teacher. And it's unique. He doesn't say only believe in Mashiach. He says, wait for his coming. It's something which we look forward to. It's something which just like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to make a million dollars. I'm excited. I'm waiting for it. Much more than that, we should be waiting, we should be looking forward to Mashiach. But the Rambam also doesn't just tell us that Mashiach is coming, he gives us a little bit of a hint, a discussion of who Mashiach is going to be with the next reference, he says. There's a reference to Mashiach in the passage concerning Bilam, who prophesies about two anointed kings. The first, David, who saved, who saved B'nai Yisrael from their oppressors, and the final anointed king who will, who will arise from his descendants 
the same Israel at the end of days. In other words, Rambam is telling us that who is going to be an example of Mashiach, of Mashiach he's going to follow in the footsteps of David, his ancestors. Now here we have, we have to understand what the Rambam is doing here. And just a general question, why is Hilchus Malachim, the last uh, set of halachos, the last set of laws in the Rambam, on the surface, the Rambam himself writes that as soon as the Bnei Yisrael come into Eretz Yisrael, who, as he says, they were from, Israel was commanded to fulfill three mitzvahs when they entered, the, when they entered Eretz Yisrael, to appoint the king, to destroy the sons of, of Amalek, and to build the base of Mikdash. So if this is fundamental, so it should be even before building the base of Mikdash, this is half a book, half of the Mishnah Torah after the building of the base of Mikdash, Islam is now starting to speak about Mashiach. So why so late? Why is this, is the Rama speaking about a king so at the end of the Mishnah Torah? But we can see it by what the Rambam writes at the end of chapter four. And even going back from the very beginning of Rambam, what was the Rambam's purpose in writing the Mishnah Torah? He writes like this. I'm writing a book to make it possible for all the laws to be revealed, both to those of lesser stature and to those of greater stature regarding every single mitzvah and all the practices were ordained by the, that were ordained by the sages and the prophets. To summarize, the intent of this text is that a person will not need any other text with regard to, to any Jewish law. Rather, this text will be a compilation of the entire oral law, including all the ordinances, customs, and decrees that were enacted from the time of Moshe until the completion of the Talmud, as we explained by going into the text that composed after the Talmud. In other words, what is Rambam doing by writing the Mishnah Torah? Giving us halachas halachas, Jewish law carefully redacted so that we know exactly how to perform every one of the mitzvahs. Then to conclude that, he says, oh, how, is Bnei Yisro, how are Bnei Yisrael going to complete the mitzvahs when they have a king? as he writes in the end of chapter four of Hilchus Molochim, all the king's deeds shall be for the sake of heaven. His purpose and intent will be to elevate the true faith and fill the world with justice, destroying the power of the wicked and raging the wars of God. In other words, where are we going to have the possibility to fulfill Torah and mitzvahs in the full sense? When we have a melech, when we have a king who leads the Jewish people as a whole, and the whole world, world after them, in a manner that the Torah and mitzvahs become the natural way of life. And he says, oh, where did we start to see this? Going back to Chesmolachim. The first one who did that was David Melech. David Melech secured peace for our entire nation. He began the preparations of Beis HaMikdash. He organized Jewish practice. David Melech was your epitome of a Jewish monarch. He showed Bnei Yisrael how to do Torah and mitzvahs in their everyday life. And therefore, in Hilchus Malachim, Ramam refers back to David. Yes, we're going to speak about Mashiach. But first, see what Mashiach is like. Mashiach is like David, and therefore he's going to be descendant of David. Re renewing the, the David and Melech's dynasty. And what's going to happen? When Mashiach restores the monarchy, he's going to, as, as he brings, as the Rebbe, continue, as Rambam continues there, he will, do, he will, he will rebuild the base of Mikdash, gathering the dispersed remnant of, Eretz, of Israel. And then in his days, all the statues will be reinstituted as in the former time, we will offer sacrifices and observe, and observe the sabbatical and jubilee laws according to particular set forth in the Torah. Now, when Bnei Yisrael and Golos, the mitzvahs, many of the mitzvahs, 
even those the agricultural laws in Eretz Yisrael, they're, they're bottom. The rabbinical ordinances kept. So we should remember, we should know, we should be familiar with what will happen when Mashiach comes. But there's no obligation, we derive according to scriptural law, to keep the agricultural laws in Eretz Yisrael today. We can't offer sacrifices. There's no base of Mikdash. So as much of the Torah is no longer feasible in a practical way. That's what Mashiach is going to reinstitute. The actual performance of the Torah and mitzvahs in a complete and perfect manner. As, and that's what the Ramam is saying. Mashiach will come and will build the base of Mikdash, gathering the first remnant of Israel, and then all the statutes will be reinstituted. We're going to be able to keep Torah law in its complete and perfect manner. And that is the purpose of all existence. And he continues here explaining, so you shouldn't make a mistake of what you think Mashiach would possibly be. One should not entertain the notion that the King Mashiach must work miracles and wonders, bring about new phenomena in the world, resurrect the dead, and perform other matters. This is not true. And he gives an example from Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva saw Bar Kokhva as Melch Mashiach, as the, as the Mashiach. Why? Because Mashiach is not supposed to work wonders. And he's not supposed to, this isn't, whether he can or cannot work wonders doesn't define his identity. What is Mashiach's identity? Someone who, as, as Obama continues at the end, of, again, he will, at that point, Point when carry out the entire Torah and mitzvahs, mitzvahs, and he will be, be able to lead the entire Jewish people, the people in their performance, as Raman writes there. The sages, the main thrust of the matter is the Torah and its laws are everlasting. We, we, we neither add to them or, or subtract from them. Well, it's Mashiach is one who is going to be, as he continues at the end in chapter, in chapter four, who will rise from the house of David, delve deeply into the study of the Torah, observe its mitzvahs as prescribed by the written oral law, compel all of Israel to walk in the way of the Torah, repair the breaches in its observance. And this will show us, we can assure, with assurance, consider such a person Mashiach. And then he continues, if he succeeds in the above, builds the base of Mikdash, then he'll gather in the dispersed remnants of Israel, then he's definitely in Mashiach. In other words, what is Mashiach bringing Torah and its mitzvahs in its full sense? And he continues in the next chapter, don't think that Mashiach is going to bring about any fundamental change in the natural order. Quite the contrary, the world will continue according to its pattern, and there will be, be no difference in the current age of the Arab Mashiach, except our emancipation from subjugation of Gentile kingdoms. And this is what the sages were looking for as he starts to conclude. The sages and prophets did not yearn for the messianic era in order that Jewish people will rule over the entire world, nor or they will have dominion over the Gentiles, nor that they should not be exalted by him in order to drink, eat, and celebrate. Rather, their aspiration was that the Jewish people would be free to involve themselves in the Torah and its wisdom without anyone to disturb them. What does Mashiach bring about? A, a situation, a setting in the world where Jews can carry out the Torah. And then, as a natural result of carrying out the Torah in that era, which this is the conclusion of the Rambam, there will be, no, there will be neither famine or war, no envy or, talk or competition, good things will flow in abundance, and all the lights will be freely available as dust. Once the occupation of the entire world will be solely to know God. The Jews will therefore be great sages and know the hidden matters, and they will attain a knowledge of the Creator to the full extent of, of mortal potential. As it says, mm-hmm. the world will be filled with knowledge of God, as the waters cover up the ocean bed. 
What are we looking for in Mashiach? A world of Torah. And that's fundamentally important. We shouldn't think that, oh, we're looking for miracles, we're looking for, for something supernatural. No, the, quite the contrary. The entire purpose of our existence is a dear betachtonim, a dwelling in the lower worlds. That this physical world as we know it, in its, all its physical existence, should be able to reflect godly truth. That, that people will live in this world as they are ordinary mortal beings with no supernatural powers, and yet Torah and mitzvahs will be their entire life, their entire focus. This is what they're living for. This is what they're living in. This is their chayas. That's Rambam. A life of Torah, a life illuminated with godliness as expressed in the Torah, and knowing God, becoming aware of him through living and studying his truth as revealed in the Torah, both the oral law and the written law, and the Mishnah Torah being the most complete fulfillment of the written law, enabling us, as, we, as, he, as Rambam said, to know God in a manner which we're totally, we like fish in the water. What's the idea of Kemaimel and Nechassim? The sea comes up the ocean bed. You know, when you look at, at an ocean, you don't see anything else. You suffu- everything thing just appears as water. So too, in Mashiach's time, our lives will be suffused with godliness, will be so involved in the Torah that all the physical dimensions of that will be just another expression of knowing God as revealed through the Torah, as, as actualized in our everyday Torah life. Have a good evening. We may we continue studying Rambam again, opening up, up a new year with new chayas, new vitality, and hopefully bringing this time when Rambam's desire to, to have the world of Torah, a world of Torah, a world where godliness is revealed to mind and chasim be realized speedily in our days. Thank you very much, Rabbi Tauger. We are to continue your wonderful work and uh, being made for Tata and uh, helping us get closer to the Bias HaMashiach, the Gula, and Shlomitus HaShlema, take of Mayad. Maskifen Haschola La Shlama. Immediately we start the next cycle, and uh, we have with us Rabbi Levi Weinberg. Um, he was with us in the past, Fabreng here be, be in Manchester. Mo, uh, many of us know him from his work, the translation of Lessons in Tanya, um, he is the founder and of the and the dean of the Hamoir, which is a spiritual community center in Johannesburg. He's also the Rosh Hashiva Rosh Kelel of Mochin Lahira, he founded, which made many over the two generations of students, Talmud, Aloche, Mephas, Malad of Tate in the world, Meiro Hira. And he has, a, uh, uh, he's very famous for his ability to explain complex subjects in very simple terms. So we're fortunate to have with us Rabbi Weinberg to open the new cycle of Limud Rambam. Rabbi Weinberg, are you here? Oh, yeah. Thank you very much, Rabbi Weinberg. Thank you. Mazel tov to the Mistaimim, those who are celebrating the theme of the Rambam and an even bigger Mazel tov to the Maschilim, those who begin again. Every beginning that anyone undertakes has in it a hint of Breshis, of the beginning of creation, that was the beginning of all beginnings. And uh, that beginning, of course, was the day when Hashem was a God, like he said, by the Arab, by Hivoiker, Yoim Echod, it was evening, it was morning, one day, not first day, but one day, and that's because on that day, Hashem was just one. So certainly when we start a project of learning Rambam, learning anything in Torah, so we start with that Echod, and that is what hovers over us as we begin. 
So a mazel tov to all of you, and may the Abishter help that your resolution to begin the Rambam either for the first time or again, may it continue with you, and may you be able to have the strength to carry it on all the way through. I'm going to begin with the actual halacha in Rambam. Simple pshat, and then we'll go into it a little bit and talk about some background. The Rambam begin with the pedicretion uh, of Hilchas Yistoydiyah, Torah, the laws of the fundamentals of Torah, as a unique category which the Rambam coined. We don't find it anywhere till the Rambam, and very little. Since. So the first Pedic begins, Yistoid ha Yistoidois, the most basic foundation, Vamud ha Chochmois, and the pillar of all wisdom, is laid out to know Sheyeshom Motsui Rishon, that there is the first being, Bohu, that first being. Mamsti kol hanimtza brings into being all that is. The kol hanimtzoi, everything that exists, mishomayim vooret of heaven and earth, umasher beinayim and anything in between, lo u elo meamitis yamitas dimotzi. It all came into being only from the true. Being, which is Hashem is Baruch Himself, He is the true being, because His dependence, His being is not dependent on anything else, didn't come from anything else. He is a being who must be, not happens to be. That that mita so He brought into being all that is. That's the first halach. So the Ramam is telling us that first of all we have to know that there's an Abishtha. He puts it in terms that uh, the Rambam's terminology, but basically you have to start off knowing that there's an Abishtha. How do you start off learning? You have to keep in mind that there's an Abishtha. We know that not chilosam bestoipon bestoipon bit chilosam. The age is waged in the beginning. The end is wedged in the beginning, and the beginning in the end. So what usually happens at a conclusion, as we find with many Meforshim in Torah, that they connect the last words of Chumash Le'ene Kol Yisroel with the first word Bereishis. I'd like to do it somewhat the other way. I'd like to understand the very first words of the Rambam in light of the very last words of the Rambam, which you just heard from Rabbi Tauger. This is toida is toidois, the most basic foundation. What is the most basic foundation? We know that the Rambam formulated 13 principles of Yiddishkeit. 13 Ikre Emuna basic ideas in Yiddish Emuna. What makes something basic an Ikre? It would seem to be that everything stands or falls with the Emuna in that Ikre. For example, why is Shabbos not an Ikre? Shabbos, so basic. Why is it not an Iker, one of the 14 principles? Because we could conceive of a Torah without Shabbos. But we could not conceive of a Torah unless we believe in the fact that Hashem communicates His will to mankind. That's one of the 13 principles that Hashem, Menabe is Bnei Ha'odom, Hashem tells mankind what he wants them to do. We cannot conceive of a Torah without 
believe that Hashem cares what we do. We cannot conceive of a Torah unless we believe that Torah is mina shamayim, it's godly. Otherwise, it's lahatl, just another law book. So every one of these 13 principles means that we cannot imagine a Yiddishkeit without it. Could we imagine Yiddishkeit without Moshiach? It would seem, yes. Perhaps we're meant to carry on as things are, not with Golas, not with suffering, but perhaps there's no idea of Moshiach. It's conceivable. Yiddishkeit is doable. You can do Shabbos, you can do Kashrus, you can do Tarot Samishpoche. All the mitzvahs are doable even without a Muna in Biyasa Moshiach. In what way is it an Iker? It's an Iker in a different way. It's an Iker in the way of an objective. In other words, yes, you could conceive of Shabbos and Kashavis and all the mitzvahs without the moon and Mashiach, but where is it heading? What is it about? What's it for? That's the moon and Mashiach. So to give an example, you could play a game of chess and all the pieces are on the board and you're castling and taking off rooks and taking off pawns and it's lepidic and every beast has another score. I'm a chayah, you're having fun. But you just happen to forget that you're supposed to get to checkmate. Can you play the game? Yeah, but you missed the whole point of the game. So all the other ikrim, in, in the, the, the 13 Ikrim of the Rambam are like, you can't play the game without a board. It's a condition. If you want to play chess, you have to have a board. If you want to, to apply it to the Ikrim, if you want to uh, live like a Yid, you have to believe that Torah, when Hashem communicated it with, to us, so they're all like the presence of the board. Moshiach is like the checkmate. It's what the whole game is about. And that's why at the very, very beginning of creation, that's what was hovering in Hashem's mind. As the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya Perik Lamed Bob, that Tachlis Briyas Oilom Hazer is Yemois Tamoshiach Shalekach Nivro Mitchi Losoi. This is what the world was created for. It, Moshiach is not a consolation prize for a Nebuch who went through Golas. It's not a, a good end to the hardship that Yidin went through ever since they became a people. No. Mashiach is lekach nivro mitchilos. Say that's what the world was created for. To put it differently, when Hashem created the world, He didn't intend the world that He created. He intended the world which we kvayochel co-create with Him, and that's the world of Mashiach which we achieve through our avoidance. And perhaps that's the meaning of the statement of Chazal that when Hashem started to create Veruach Elekin Merachepes Al Pnei Hamoy, the spirit of Hashem hovered over the waters. What spirit of Hashem? The Chazal say, Zeruchoi Shel Moshiach, the spirit of Moshiach. What's Moshiach doing here at the beginning of creation? There's no goals yet. There are no problems yet. Why do we need Mashiach at the beginning of creation? Because that's what creation is all about. And now let's reread the first halacha in light of that idea. Yistoida yistoida, the most basic principle. 
And the pillar of wisdom is what? To know that first being Hashem. Now, what is this? That's the Amun in Bias Tamashiach. That's the Yisoy. That's the basic principle which got everything going. So the last halacha which talks about the Amun in Bias Tamashiach, and over there it says, Lepikoch Yiu Yisroel Chachomim Gedoyle. Yid will be great Chachomim. They'll achieve the knowledge of their creator. What's that? That is the Chochme. Yidn will be a Chochomim in the sense of Amud HaChochme. They'll achieve that knowledge of creator as the Ramam finishes the last Halacha. Kimolo Hore Deus Tashem. The whole world is filled with knowledge of Hashem, and that's the Leida to know Shiesha Motzerish. So, the Rambam, so to speak, is coming from the last halochas of Moshiach to the first halochas of Yistoid Hayistoidoid Vamud Hachokhmut. A few words about the general background of the Rebbe's Takon in Rambam. It's hard for people growing up today to realize what a chiddish it is, what an innovation, how surprising it was, this takone that the Chabad has latched on to Ramba. Just to illustrate a little bit how much of a chiddish it is, I'll tell you a personal story. In Tovshin Mem Gimel, 1983, I was sent by the Rebbe to Johannesburg to head a yeshiva which had just begun in Johannesburg. We started Shvat Tovshin Mem Dalit, <coughs> the beginning of 84. The following year, sometime also around Shabbat, I had an idea. You know, it would be really that night if Bochrim would learn Rambam. We had different things that we learned in the afternoon. We learned Nach, we learned Medrash, we learned different Hashkofa things. So Rambam would be a good idea. Because after all, ask a typical yeshiva bocha, can you tell me what's special about the Mustaf of a Yoival year? On Yom Kippur, that's when Yoival really happens. Is there any special mention of this Yoival in the Yom Kippur of Yoival? If you didn't learn the Rambam, 95% chance that you would know that the Mustaf of a Yoival year is very different from the Mustaf of every single one of the other 49 years. We stay Malchios, the Chroinois, the Choifres, like a Mustaf of Rosh Hashanah. Nobody would know about that. And there are a thousand things which are typical Yeshiva Bokhari, who learns well. He's in Yeshiva 10 years, he never came across. So I thought it would be a nice thing. To, to learn selected halachas from the Rambam. And I put it to my colleagues, two other members of the Anhol of the Yeshiva, and their reaction was, what? Rambam? Rambam is the business for Rosh Yeshivas to peg their pulling. They'll explain a point of Rambam based on their idea, their pulpul, which they have in the Gemorah. That's like a chef for them. What's it got to do with it? Hey, Mr. Help, that based on the Rebbe introduced the Limud HaRambam. Um, I felt vindicated, except that the Rebbe said not to make it part of the state of But I just want to bring out how foreign the idea was to, to find Hasidish Talmud HaChomim, but the idea of making a Kriyas and learning Rambam, 
who had it. So it, it revolutionized our approach. Today, you find every Chabadnik all over the place holding a Rambam, he's on a train, he's on a plane, he's got some, some form of Rambam, he's got something. It wouldn't have existed 35 years ago. So the Rebbe turned the Rambam into a Chosit. And that's connected with a story. The story is actually with the Rebbe, the Temach Tedek, who was summoned to Petersburg in Top Gimel 1843 for a conference. And um, he had a feeling that something was wrong already from Rosh Hashanah before he was uh, in a very, very embittered state. What was wrong was that the government wanted to force reforms on Yidin, instigated by Maharstayach and Mahrivayach, other Yidin who looked for reforms, especially in the area of education. The Tamachtadik spent months in Petersburg at this conference, in the course of which he was under house arrest dozens of times. Before he left, the Temach Tedek, knowing that he's going to have to debate one of these maskilim on philosophical grounds, he prepared some notes for himself. Today, those notes have been published as Tefer HaChakiro Derech Emuna, the book of philosophy, the path of Emuna. You hear what kind of philosophy this is? This is an Emuna Dike Chakir. That a faith, Chakir. So the Tamachtetic wrote it as notes for his to be upcoming debate. And I don't know whether he left the note in Lubavitch or whether he left a draft and took along the refined copy. In any case, when the Tamachtetic left, his son, the Maharil, Rabbi Huda Leib, was in Lubavitch, and he's going through his father's papers, the Tamachtetic's papers, and he sees, oh, this is different. The Tate, his father, the Tamachtetic, never wrote in this signal, in this style, in this vocabulary, in this terminology. This is a Hiddish. So, you know, whatever happens with things that are surprising and new, you tell them to just one good friend, but that's all it took. Before you knew it, they were circulating all over, copies from copies. The Tamachtedek returned several months later to Lubavitch, and he discovers that his notes have been, become widespread. And he was upset. He said to the Maril, and here's the, the important point. He said to the Maril, the Ram Bambetzach Bamir, the Rambam pleads with me that I should turn him into a host. I'll explain in a second. And you, Maril, want to turn me, the Rebbe de Temachtedek, into a choiker, into a philosopher? What does it mean, the Rambam wants to be turned into a host? The Rambam wants that his writing should be understood according to Hasidism. And this is my own parenthetical insertion in the story. We know, in fact, that the Rebbe, the Temach Tedek had a kvirs, a fixed time to learn for about two and a half years. He learned Moira Nebuchim, the Rambam's classic philosophic statement, according to Hasidism. And he learned Ikrim and Kuzari, but back to the Rambam. They explained the Rambam's philosophy based on Hasidism, which is a, a big stretch. It's a totally different world. No one ever thought they could come together. The 
the Mahtadik made the Rambam accosted it that way. The Rebbe made the Rambam accosted it that every Chotid is connected, he spends his days learning Rambam, or he won't go to bed until he finishes his Kriya the Rambam. He did discussions on what that proves. What did Rambam mean? Why did he put it in this order? What is it? What's it Kiddush? Unprecedented. So the Rebbe made Rambam a chastid, but of course it's not only if a chastidim and the takone of the Rambam is the universal takone, Hashem, so that the whole world can be filled with the knowledge of Hashem. May the Abish to help that you, those listening now, and all those who undertook to to uh, learn the Rambam in this 40th cycle, in this 40th year or 40th cycle, we can finally get it, we'll arrive at a new understanding of the Rebbe's Takon, a new appreciation. So I wish you all, again, Mazel Tov and lots of Atloch. Thank you very much, Rabbi Weinberg. Hope we can... Um... See you again in person. Mirz Hashem Yerushalayim Rakedesh, and if that's for Halzich from Eze Shiva Shetiyo, so be together. We'll see, hope to see you in Manchester as well again. Gesundte Heit and Frei Lecha Heit. Thank you so much, Doctor Davidov. Is the author of a series of books to assist in learning Rambam. Uh, Dr. Davidov lives now, he's from South Africa originally, and he now lives in London. 14 Svarim that have summaries, lengthy, longer summaries with charts and concise summaries to make it easier to understand. Because of the time the Siyuma Rambam, there's a special discount in general that the, you can get the entire set, I think it's 14 Svarim for 175 pounds, and along with it you get uh, free the all the PDFs that normally the cost of 110 pounds or you can get a 50% discount for the PDFs alone. But in honor of this Yuma Rambam, he's offered to give us the first volume of PDF for free. I'll post the link on the chat with a um, code to get the first volume of the lengthy summaries uh, PDF for free. So we're very grateful to Dr. Davidov and which are much aslacha to be help and um, be mefarsim and make it easier for us to learn Nambam in English. Um, there's also QR codes that helps it to link and you can get to the charts easier and so on. So I encourage you to look at it and we'll post the links shortly. We've had also, we're honored to have uh, the Capella special performance for us in Manchester. And we're going to start with the Nigan of Tzamalacha of Nafshi, something that's certainly on our mind right now uh, in these times. And um, how much would it, we would have loved to hear a word from the Rebbe now and to give us guidance. And we hope to see the Rebbe very, very soon with Bia Samashiach. Oh, <laughs> 
second nigun um if we can mention again the the model chain all of our shalom the model some of us know he came to manchester to visit his family uh the parents chain's father the model didn't miss a day of rambam he had his 8 p.m shear rain or shine he would be by that shear a family of Simcha, even when there was a surprise birthday party where all of his children came, eight o'clock, he was by the Shir, by the Rambam Shir. So that's a big chizuk for us to learn. We thank the Chains for their sponsorship of this event and wish them Adichas Yav Mishan and Tevis in Alagutta Zachen. The Rebbe always encouraged that we learn Hilchas Beis Abchira in this Tkufa. So Baruch Hashem, we managed to organize with Rabbi Yosef Keller from New York. Rabbi Yosef Keller is the author of Hilchas Beis Abchira of the Rambam Api Kisve Yad. And he consulted Rabbi Lavnuni, those who know Rabbi Lavnuni, who made the model of the Beis Amigdosh the accurate model, and he brought it as a famous picture, how he brings it to the Rebbe, the video, he brings it to the Rebbe. So Rabbi Keller was consulted him in building that model and in, in understanding, making sure it's accurate. Rabbi Yosef Keller is Mirza Hashem going to give a three-part series of Hilchas Beis Abchira, starting this Tuesday night at 8.30 with the same Zoom link. This and the three-part every Tuesday night at 8.30 Mirza Hashem for the next three weeks. Amir Tashem Yushalayim Mir Akedash will see the building of the base of Mikdash Ashlishi, and we won't need to have just the shear about the second base of Mikdash, will be a shear, a live shear of this third base of Mikdash. We'll now go to the second digan that was recorded for us, Ani Mamin. <laughs> Ani 
Jacobson. Rabbi Jacobson was here in Manchester before as well and uh, we hope and that you can visit us once again and join us in person. We're very grateful that you're here with us. Rabbi Jacobson was the editor-in-chief of Vada Nochas at Mimim, one of the organizations responsible or for recording the Hanochis of the Rebbe de Fabrengens for 14 years. Rabbi Jacobson is the author of Toward a Meaningful Life and runs the founder and runs the Meaningful Life Center. He's also publisher of the Yiddish and English weekly, the Algemeiner Journal. Many of us have, have listened and were inspired by his weekly um, talks, practical chsidis, and we're very grateful that he's here with us. The title is the Rambam, Rev the Rambam Revolution, revealing the global, spiritual, and cosmic importance of daily Rambam study. Thank you, Rabbi Jacobson. 
Thank you very much. It's a great honor. Thank you so much for honoring me to share in this momentous occasion. The 39th theme in the beginning of the 40th cycle when the Rebbe instituted this Takona and Achen Shal Pesach Tovshin Dalad Mem in 1984. So Kved Harabonim, Rosh Yeshivas, um, all those gathered, as the Rebbe points out often, that the power of technology allows this to reach global proportions, whereas when we're all in one location, you only have that amount, Mokim is Mugbul, as the Rambam, of course, explains in many places. But when you have technology, it transcends time and space. So in many ways, it has the power to bring Teda, Chsidis, Elokus, godliness, to places and to times that on their own would have been fragmented and separated. So though I am here in New York and you're in Manchester, and I'm sure there are people participating from different parts of the world, it only generates and creates even more achdus. As the Rebbe, one of the main emphasis of the Rambam, when he instituted the, the learning of Rambam, the achdus, the achdus of Ali Eden learning, and the achdus of Kola Teira Kula, which the Rambam encompasses in his Sefer Mishneh Teira, Yad HaChazok. Much has been said about the learning of Rambam, the importance of it, and obviously as Chsidim, a takana is a takana, Friedrich Rebbe instituted Chitas, Chumash, Tilim, Tanya. The Rebbe instituted Rambam. But it's always good to think a little more of the importance of why. Why Dafke Rambam? And why Dafke in Tovshin Mem Dalad? And Dafke by the Rebbe. So though none of us can know the Rebbe's Kavonis, but the Rebbe spoke enough to tell us many different things. So I want to touch upon is a deeper look of why the Rebbe chose Rambam and what it means for us personally. Though it's, we're going into the 40th year, so there are things perhaps that we can discover now that we may not have fully appreciated back then, 40 years ago, 39 years ago, that can, above all, not just as insight, but take away a deeper appreciation and a deeper commitment. Everything has to come down to Maisa Bapel, a deeper commitment to this Takana and in spreading it all over the world, which is what the Rebbe wanted. That was his intention. It shouldn't just be for Chsidei Chabad. It should be for Eden everywhere, of all Kreisen, of all Chugim, of every background, a Rambam for all people, for all Jews, but when you understand the importance of it, not just as a taconic, Zayda Gezarti, the Rebbe said to do so, it can add to the whole chayas and to the whole commitment and passion behind it. So it's always good to begin with Akasha, with a question. That's how Jews think. A question, especially of Chabad, we ask, we think, Chochma bin Adas, we try to understand things. So here's my question, my klotz kashif, so to speak. Chsid is Chabad, the Alter Rebbe instituted Chassidus Chabad after Chassidus Akol is from the Baal Shem Tov and Magid. So that's true, the Alter Rebbe wrote a Shulchan Aruch, Shulchan Aruch HaRav, but the main contribution of Chassidus Chabad is Kishmoi Kenu, Chassidus and Chabad. Shulchan Aruch is full with Chidushim. But you see, the main thrust of the Alter Rebbe going through each generation, Mitla Rebbe, Tzamech Tzedek, the Rebbe Marash, the Rebbe Rashav, the Friedrich Rebbe and the Rebbe, Though they're ge'enim in nigla, obviously, and taught nigla and have tshuvas, but the main chiddush was chsidus chabad, yefutsu menesecha chutsa. As the Baal Shem Tov heard from Mashiach, that os ka'osim ma'osimad domalka Mashiach, when there'll be the yefutsu menesecha chutsa. So it seems interesting that the Rebbe would choose Rambam, not learn hebshachayim beiz or samach vov and be mechalik that to the whole, uh, to everybody, or Tanya for that matter, though we have Chitas. So you could say, okay, not Tanya, but other things. Tafka is something that is not Chsidis Bechla. It's Nigla. And to the extent that there are even opinions that the Rambam didn't, was not, did not know Kabbalah. 
There are opinions that he knew Kabbalah. There's an opinion that he only found out at the end of his lifetime. Another opinion that he always knew, but it was not his Indian to be Megalit. So there's a Ramosim that Agachava brings and other places. And there's an opinion that he didn't know. Not every God will be Yisrael knew all Chalkei Atera. It's not a chsodin. It was every, everyone had their shlichus and tafkit. So why did the Rebbe choose Rambam of all things? And he connected it to Agdus, as I mentioned, Agdus Yisrael, all the Eden together learning, and Agdus Atera, because the Rambam, unlike Shulchan Aruch, also talks about Hilchus of the Mashiach and also about the laws of Beis Amigdash. In Shulchan Aruch, Eira Chaim, through Yeredeya, and Cheshem Mishpat, and Evan Ezer, is all halachas that are shayochim shayach bizman azeh. The Rambam includes all halachas. As he writes in his introduction, he's encompassing the entire Tera to the point that you don't need anything but my Tera Shevik Savin and Mishnah Tera. And this is what the Rebbe chose. So can move on, I'm not asking a question on the Rebbe. We accept everything the Rebbe, but it's interesting to see, can we understand that a bit? Did the Rebbe give us any hints? Or maybe more explicitly, why? And connected, as I said, also to the Geula. Because when you have Ahdus Yisrael and Ahdus Atera, Kol Atera Kula, by all Eden, that's the Keli for Gula Amitis Vashlema. As the Rambam is Messiah, talks about the Geula in Halacha too. The end of Hilchus Malachim, as we were just Messiah in Perik Yudbeis. The question gets a little more interesting. If you think about it, among Chugi uh, B'Yisrael, the ones who really say, they claim that they, I can't say own, but that they are domain, is an Ambam, is the, 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 the Yeshivas HaBrisk, Derech from Brisker, the Brisker Yeshivas. Abchaim Brisk was known as being a Gon in Rambam. The Brisker, of course, are an extension of the Velozhin, that goes back all the way to the Managdim, to the Alter Rebbe. So Rambam, not Chadrushon, the Rambam is Managid, but the Rambam is actually the domain of the Brisker. There's an interesting story they tell. Abchaim, Abchaim Abrisk, had one of his friends, was happened to be a Chabad Chosid, a famous Chabad Chosid, his name was Abmendel Chain. The story goes, they were once sitting and learning together or discussing, and Rambam came up. They were discussing different uh, Rambam. And they were arguing, Pshat and this Rambam, Pshat and that Rambam. Rambam was such a central component in the Brisk Shita. And uh, in their disagreement, Rab Mendel suddenly says to Rab Chaim, what you're saying is, is a Rambam that says this, that contradicts what you're saying. Rab Chaim looks at him and says, listen, you're gone, I respect you, but the Rambam is somewhat our domain now. There's no such Rambam. Rab Mendel went out of the room, came back with a Rambam, the Rambam he was referring to, put it down on the table, and left the room. He left the room. The, the Rab Chaim looked into the Rambam, yeah, it was a Rambam talk, Rab Mendel was correct. Later, Rab Chaim was a colleague and an ally in many areas with the Rebbe Rashab. They were the two big dalim in Russia at the time. You know, the stories of the Asifas and their, their cooperation and respect and Abchaim told the Rebbe Rashab a little while afterwards, he said to the Rebbe Rashab, he knew that Mendel was a gone in Limadat Tater, but he didn't know he was such a gone in Midas Tevis. The fact that he walked out of the room, he didn't want to be there in any way to cause any form of shame or anything that. So, but ne nevertheless, that the Rebbe should suddenly, as one brisker, one brisker Talmud once told me, at Rosh Hashiva actually in Yerushalayim, he said to me, your Rebbe, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, hijacked the Rambam from us. He stole the Rambam. I said, stole? Every, the Rambam is for Kol Ali Eden. Ad Rebbe, let's all learn together. But I know what he meant. I know that, just stick to uh, your, your field. This is our field. And yet, this is what the Rebbe did. So to add to the equation, so to speak, to add to the whole uh, drama, the Rambam also was not a simple person. He was what we would call controversial in his time. First of all, because there wasn't technology and there wasn't communication as it is today, so the Rebbe Rambam was misunderstood by some. As a matter of fact, to the point he was dismissed. You may know that the Rambam, some of his farim were burned. Some people saw the Rambam when they saw some of his writings, 
made a nevuchin, got of the perplexed, and the beginning of Hilchus Yisei Da'atayda, they saw it as somewhat a little enlightened. Their mistaken interpretation that the Rambam was a little more like a rationalist, citing philosophy, Aristotelian philosophy. So some dismissed it to the point they actually burned the Rambam's body. The Rambam was misunderstood, the Rambam was not fully understood. It was the Ramban and other Gdelim, the next generations that came and wrote a Snatzels where they defended the Rambam and other Rabbi, they saw the godless of the Rambam. But still, as the Rebbe cited a number of times, I don't know if today, but there was a time where the first four Prokim in Hilchus Yisrael Dateira were, were, were skipped in some yeshivas. Because that was seen as the philosopher Rambam, not the Isha Aloha, the, the Bala Aloha of the Rambam. Obviously, when you think about it, the Rambam is a Rambam, a God will be Yisrael, and even Meir Nevuchim, as the Rebbe described in so many different ways, which we're not going to go into, it's all part of the Rambam. And it became clear that the Rambam was misunderstood, but he was controversial. At Kedekach, if you look in the Rambam right now, printed in the Rambam, what comes right side by side with the Rambam, besides the commentaries? Hasogas Haraivad. Hasogas Haraivad. When you read them, not everyone, but quite a few, are a direct attack on the Rambam. Sometimes even a personal attack. With very sharp words, harsh words. Because the Raivid saw the Rambam and some things that he said, he saw, he completely disagreed. Not just Shammai and Hilo. A real strong disagreement. At, to the extent that when you read it, you say, what? Why would they print something like this? If today somebody wrote that on a Rosh Yeshiva, not even on the caliber of the Rambam, they'd excommun excommunicate him. Mam is bizarre in some cases. I'm gonna, but it's printed. I tell very often, people tell me, people more, people who question, they say, all you Jews, they're all so conformist. Everybody's just thinking the same way. Nobody has different opinions. I said, I always open up. I said, let me show you something. I open up a Rambam with a Raivet, whether it's Hilchus Tshuva, the strong words there, or in other places, and I say, tell me, and I translate, if they know Hebrew, they don't know Hebrew, and I translate, I say, do you have any books like that where an author is completely attacked by someone and you print it and we learn both together, it's all part of Teda? It's the exact opposite, that's the Derech HaTeda. But it just goes to show how the Rambam was, was a, a man ahead of his time, if you want to put it this way. So how do we understand this whole thing? And going back, of course, to the main point that we're talking about here, Sima Rambam, the Rebbe instituted. And obviously, when Eifun Alimud, and the way that should reach Ali Eden, three prokim of the day was the main, the main takon. But the Rebbe also said, in case somebody can't do three prokim, one perik each day. So it concludes around every once every three years, a little less. And even Seifun or Seifun mitzvahs for those, for children or for others who are unable to keep with the halachas. You see the extent the Rebbe went to encompass everyone. So how do we, how do we uh, understand this in context, especially Mifsoyim in the, in the Lamids, in the Chofs and the Lamids, the Rebbe instituted the term Mifsoyim. Mifsoyim, the Rebbe's a Nasi Yisrael. He saw the need to be made at Eden, especially so many who are assimilated. So the Rebbe saw that through these Mifsoyim, obviously the Gili of the Rebbe's Teda, Chsidis, and so on, is all in the line of Yafutz Menasech Chutzim, a Ramba, a Takona like the Ramba. So, not gonna, we don't have to speculate, we don't have to guess. The Rebbe Befeirish did explain it a little earlier. Those familiar with the Rebbe's approach, and you study, you see it, an interesting approach. Very often, before the Rebbe instituted something, he often would drop a remez, a hint. He would talk about it before, sometimes years before, until he came back to it. And the Rebbe sometimes even said, I was waiting to emes al happen. I was waiting for somebody to appreciate the, the, the hint I, I dropped or the indication. So Mem Dalet, Tosh Mem Dalet, is preceded nine years earlier with Tosh Shin Lamed Hay. Tosh Shin Lamed Hay, I remember this, I was a Bochir in 770, and the Rebbe was Yutas Kislev, Tosh Shin Lamed Hay, Rosh Hashanah of Chsidis, Chsidis, and the Rebbe began, as his custom was on Yutas Kislev, his Chalukas Hashas, so the Rebbe would make a siyum and a mesechta. What mesechta did the Rebbe choose in Yutas Kisl of Tav Shalam and Hei? Sechta Tomid. Tomid. And the Rebbe started a siyum, Kedarki Bakedesh, questions, back and forth, explanations. 
Then suddenly, the transition into Vyeshlik is connected with Siyama Rambam. No, no obvious connection. It's not like the Rambam, because Tommy calls the Rambam, it means there's no direct connection. They never start connecting to Siyama Rambam. So I remember listening to it. You know, okay, Rebbe Yeshlik Hashir. It's not uncommon. You connect it. But then started a whole new parsha. I think it's maybe one of the longest, if not the longest sikha, uninterrupted by Nagunim that the Rebbe delivered. I don't remember the length, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours even. But I remember it went on and on. If the Rebbe was a Mayan Amizgaber, this was a Mayan Amizgaber Shem Amizgaber. On and on. And not a, a porverter. A depth analysis of the Siyam Rambam. Then he connected to Ascholos Rambam. Connected to Yutas Kislev. Connected to Mesech Tatomid. Connected basically to Kola Teira Kula. The Rebbe's approach, Agdus of Kola Teira. And it was very profound and very complex to the point, I remember afterwards, I was already getting involved in the Fabrengans and Sichas. Afterwards, that Shabbos afterwards, Pasha Vayeshev, Shabbos Vayeshev, Shabbos Miketz, questions went in, and the Rebbe, you could see the Koch was tremendous. It was one of the most, you know, I mean, the Rebbe Koch Sich and everything, but this was on a different scale. And questions and answers and questions and answers all those weeks to the point that that year, in Hapardis, in the Kavitz Hapardis, released by Gudis Saraborim, Rav Simcha Elberg, all of Ashalom, was the Eirich, was the editor. The Rebbe edited a part of the Sikha that was published in Hapardis. Edit, didn't edit it once. He edited five times. It was up there, Rabbi El once told me, more than even in Yonah Shalteris Achsidis, how much the Rebbe edited. One of the interesting things, which sets the tone for what, what, I, want to, what I want to share with you, is that the Rebbe insisted that even though he connected the ideas with concepts in Chassidus, but everywhere there was a hint of a Chassidus Shaloshim, from Chassidus, in the Pnim, in the actual text of this Hadran, the Rebbe said everything in footnotes. Chassidus, Mokedus, Chassidus, and language, it should only be in the language of the Rambam of Allah. That was the Rebbe insisted. Okay. Now, this, I'm not going to go over through the whole Hadran, but this was a Hadran, and afterwards, it's not like the Rebbe made the Takona to learn Rambam the next month or the next year. It was nine years. This was Yutas Kisru Lamed Hei, Achon Shapesach, Mem Dalet, more than nine years later. But when you look back, you start seeing a pattern. They say, I don't know if there's a mocha, they say when the Rebbe was in Paris even, he would learn Rambam every day, some people said. And there are, they say in the time of the Magi, there was Rambam. There were connections. But you never really fully appreciated it. Now, what is the Nukud in this Hadran? Which I believe that when you look into it, you see what the Chidush of the Rambam is even more than is, uh, meets the naked eye. What's the Chidush in the, the, among the different Chidush? There's a lot of Chidush. The Rebbe begins and explains the first two halachas in Rambam. You say they say the Ramuda Chochmas, Leida Sheyasha Motzerish. Which is the basic belief, obviously, that God created. God is the Motzerish, and he's the first cause, the first, the source of everything. Okay. Then comes Halacha 2. Or some say, and I remember the Rebbe was like incredulous. He said, what kind of statement is that? In halacha? That what? That God doesn't exist? Why would there even be such a havamin? Taylor never says there's a havamin. But it's an axiom. It's a given. You say the Yisrael, Since when do we consider that God doesn't exist? Come on, let's not. And the Rebbe in Diyu Kaloshin, since the Rav Shana Rambam is Tzacho, Bruda, everything is precise, as we know. What means Yala la Das? Yala? An Ali and Das? Should have said, Im Yim Tzah Odom, Im Im Il Ol. You know, there's a lot of ways to say it. A Kasal Kadaik, that you're going to negate. What's Yala la Das? Among other questions. And the Nakuda of the Rebbe's answer, is so revolutionary 
when you think about it, that you realize immediately that Rambam on a completely different level. It's one of the things that is so understood once you, once you understand the Rebbe's Pshat, you start wondering how did anyone else learn it in a different way? What did the Rebbe say? The Rebbe, and of course, the, I should add one more question. What's all this negate to Aloha? It's a safer Aloha's Aloha's. It's not a safer of Kira. It's not a safer of proving God's existence or the nature of God's existence. That's made in Nevuchim or others for him. This is Sefer Halach Halach. Everything is Halach is here. Which of course comes to challenge those that decide not to learn the first four Prakim. It's Halach. What's the Halach here? So the Rebbe answered, Bikitzer. And uh, the Rebbe answered, and again, only in the language of the Rambam. We'll soon connect it to the language of Chassidus. What does the Rebbe say? That when you're dealing with a Sefer of Halach, there's a first fundamental principles that have to be put in place. Abish to create a world, yeah, Motzerish, fine, created a world. Now he says, go ahead and take the world, the chefs of this physical world, and turn it into something that the Tater says what you should do with it. An Esrik, on the Sukkis, there's a certain thing. You Makadish, the Esrik becomes now a mitzvah. Some things are Tashmish mitzvah, some Tashmish Gdusha, some are Chefzish Gdusha. You can turn chayl into kedush. It's essentially what Allah Allah comes to direct us how to take a world, you call it a raw, unshaped world that God created, a Shabbat Alekim Lases, and how you should make Lesakin. of the Lashamrit, how you align the world to what Abishta wants. Okay, very clear. That's the whole basis of Allah. That's why you need to learn Allah. What does Allah tell you to do? Hamaisa Shayasun. Because on our own, we wouldn't know how to behave in this world. Not everything is obvious. So we have Teira, Halacha, that tells us, this is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're not supposed to do. Here are all the nuances. And it takes area by area, whether it's Hilchus, you say, that Teira, then there's Hilchus, Hilchus Deus, and then there's Hilchus Mad, uh, Talmud Teira, Sefer Av, Kekrishme, Tefillah. And you go on and on. Each one of the Yudalits Farim of the Rambam covers another area of, of, of the Tehra. That's Allah. But there comes an obvious question. How do you have the power to change the world that God created? The Abish to create Chayil as Chayil. How could a human being, we ourselves are Nivroim, how can we take a Nivra and change it? If you're talking about like before Matan Tehra, where you didn't change the world, so good, you're bringing in a certain level of uh, lakus, a certain level of, of gdusha, of, of gat, gatlachkai. But you're talking about turning tail, you're taking a cloth, parchment, that comes from the hide of an animal, an animal in the wild, and you're turning it into cloth of ivastam, of sefer tail, fil no mezuzah. You're turning it into gdusha. Forever it's changed. You've changed this object. You no longer can ever throw it out. It always will be kaddish. When the Beis Hamidrash was built in the Hara Bayis, it forever changed that Mokim. Kedusha Lezazimim came. How could a human being, through human actions, change a world that is created by God? God made the boundary between Chel and Kedush. We didn't make this boundary. You can't suddenly come and change. You could change it superficially. So the Rebbe says, comes the second halacha and tells you how you can do it. Because Yala Aladas is not to say that God forbid there's no Eibishter. Im yala adasha hu ene motze, that the Eibishter is beyond being a motze. The Eibishter is beyond being a, an existing source. Motze means he relates to existence. Motze, memenu nimtza, kola nimtzayim. There's some relationship between. Obviously, he's the creator, we're the creation. But im yala adasha hu ene motze, means he's not even in the gedda. He's not even in the domain, in the realm of a creator so nothing else exists because nothing else matters. That means God that chose not to relate to existence. For Abish to, to create existence, he has to relate to it. He has to want it. That will makes a relationship. So that explains how halacha, how halacha can be God's will, the Tzainish Al-Kadosh Baruch God's will, how to bring godliness into this world. But the Ene Motze teaches us another thing. Because Abish is beyond existence, Therefore, he can give us the power through Teda and Halacha to change existence. You cannot change a system from within a system. 
you need to be able to go back to the engine room. Because once they're able to wire things, we say, for example, in the, the Gemara says that the Zivug is Kosher Kekriya Shamsuf. What Kosher Kekriya Shamsuf? Well, the Abish is difficult for him to make Kriya Shamsuf. Why is it Kosher? What's difficult? He created water, he created land, and then he decides to, to separate the, the, the water and it should become like land that the Jews can walk through it. What's the Kosher? So the answer is because the Abish to himself bound himself to the Pasuk Lo Yush Besu. Once he created the rules for existence, he does not defy them. He himself binds himself. A Kemuvan he could. Kol Yochel, Ebesh could do whatever he wants. But even Kriya Siamsa, which is a Nes Gole, not a Nes Malubish Beteva, an open miracle. Then, what the Ebesh did, sent a wind, and the wind held up the water, like a, like a, like a wall. What, the Ebesh needs the tricks? He wants, he just says, he, just like he says, he Rakia, he Eir. He could say, water, the water spread and let them walk through it. Why the Abish have to use all these methods? Because the Abish himself does not defy his own structure. So the only way to change existence requires a level of enimotse to be able to change. So the Rebbe says, in every halacha, there's two aspects. One is the power to change something. That comes from enimotse. And the second is the power to be mabshich Getlachkeit and Mamchik Ratzon Hashem in the object. And that's Motzei. And that's the language that Eb insisted on using. And when they edit in his edits, he would not allow them to use a language that if you used it, anyone who learns Chsidis would right away understand. The Malakalalmin is Motzei. That's a Lakus, that's Melubish Ba'elamis. That has the power to bring Mamchik Alakus into the world, to bring godliness. But it doesn't have the power to create yesh ma'ayin. And it doesn't have a power to create from yesh back to an ayin. Meaning, taking a gashmi's dikah thing and turning it into gdusha. There you need a nemotze. You need a power of elokus. I'm now using the language of chassidus. That's higher than existence. That power, with that power, we can go into existence and rewire it. And that the Rebbe goes on to explain how the difference between mitzvah sesa, mitzvah leisesa, chiyuv and shlila and every mitzvah. That's why the Rambam, so first of all, it answers the question, it's an aliyah, it's takan aliyah. Not in a motzei chaz v'shom l'griyusa, l'mal yusa. He's beyond existence. And therefore nothing else can exist. Therefore that, when you invoke that, that gives the power to transform existence. And the, the and it's the gate aloche, because this is the yesod of aloche. The Rambam is explaining how aloche changes the world. Everything in the Sefer, the Rambam is halochas halochas. This is not a discussion about God's personality and whether, how God level, whether he's motze or ain't a motze. It's a gay to because you must have motze and ain't a motze for aloche to be chal in reality. I remember in, uh, in Tov Shin Chof, there's a Rishima, there's a, the Rebbe had college students came to see the Rebbe. Rabbi Dr. Yitzchak Black brought them. They had a Yechidus college students. They asked a lot of questions. It was later edited by the Rebbe. And one of the questions they asked the Rebbe was if a Rebbe can perform miracles. So the Rebbe answered the following. He said, whether the Rebbe, they asked whether the Rebbe can perform miracles. So, uh, so the Rebbe said, I can't vouch for what other people say about me, but let me explain to you the dynamics of a miracle. The Rebbe says a miracle is not as uh, irrational as it seems. If you have a structure of exist, a, a machine that's working, and you're able to go back to the wiring of the engineer that wired the machine, you can rewire it. So everything in this physical world that ever says comes from a spiritual forces. If you can go to the spiritual forces and rewire them, it'll change the physical reality. That's what a person who does a nes sachakl. Then at the end of the yechid is the Rebbe said, now, if you leave the, tonight from this room and each of you adds and increases a good deed, I will have performed a miracle. Later, the Rebbe, when he edited, he took out I and he wrote, we will have performed a miracle. Okay, however you inter interpret that. But the point of matter is, interesting way of understanding the dynamics of a miracle, of a nes, not just tam. Someone does a miracle. It's going into the source, into the Ein in this language. 
and rewiring it from the same place that created it can also say, here's how you can rewire it. Which of course is the Chiddush of Matan Teda, according to Aksidus explains, that gave us the Keach, because the Geach Keach HaAtzmus, that gives us the power of Enemotze to be able to go, and, or the power of Seva of Kalaman, to actually transform the world. Not just to bring a Gili Eir. It's one thing to bring light with his darkness. Another is to transform the darkness into light. To transform a Chavzah Shal Gedusha, a Chavzah Shal Chayel, to a Chavzah Shal Gedusha requires the Enemotze. Okay. This is a, the, the kuda I wanted to share from Tavshin Lamed Hay. Now you say, what does this negate to anything? It's negate to everything. Because now the connection to the end of the Rambam is what? That when we use halacha, which is the call sefer halacha, is just like the beginning of the Rambam told us what the, what the, ingre, what the tools and instruments we have. We have the koyach of the motze. We have the koyach of the ene motze. What happens when we take implement it all? So we transform this world. The world becomes transformed into what? The last Patek of the Rambam, a world which is Again, Das, Leda, Das, Yalala Das, that the world is transformed. There will be no From Yeshaya, the Rambam quotes. What's Molot is Deus Hashem Kamei Meyom Mechasim? It could have just said Ki Molot is Deus Hashem. That the world be filled with God now, divine knowledge. Kamei Meyom Mechasim. That the earth itself, the world itself, the Yam, will be completely submerged like the, 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 the bed of the ocean with water. So it's transformation, not just Gilui, not just bringing godliness and godly knowledge and godly mitzvahs into this world. It's transformation of the world. So Molot is Deus Hashem, Kabayim Le'yam Achasim, is a result of Motze and Eni Motze working together through Halacha to change the actual world in which we live. In, in a nutshell. Now, to make the point really clear, I, I happened to notice after, I don't remember when it was, maybe Lamed Zion, a few years after Lamed Hay. The Rebbe then edited the Sikha more. There's a beginning, there's an end. It came out in a Kuntras. Hadan of the Rambam Lamed Hay. A classic of classics. This is all before the Takona. Around, I think, Lamed Zayin, Lamed Ches. I, I happened to be looking at a Sefer. A book written by Harav Yasheber Salavechik, a grandson of Rab Chaim Abrisk, whose domain is Rambam. His sefer is called Ish Halacha, and it was then translated in English, the Halachic Man. And briefly, here's what he says. He says, he always wondered why the school of Volozhin, and then followed by the school of Brisk, did not embrace the approach of the Alter Rebbe. The Chayr, the Alter Rebbe's approach seems to be Bechlal Masayim on it. Nister and Nigla. Shulchan Aruch, Harav, but also Nister, Tanya, and Chesidus. It seems like a perfect combination. Why did they reject that? The Nister part. And he said, being a student of Brisk and a family of Brisk, he's coming to defend and explain his, his, uh, his uh, parents, grandparents and ancestors. And he says the following, because they felt that for the Hamein Am, for the average person, we can't figure out what's going on behind the scenes in the engine room, using the example I said before. We are told to be a isha locha. You have a yad, a hand, it should be a yad mechalekes doka. Make sure it's a hand that gives charity. You have legs, have a rotz ledvar mitzvah, run to do a mitzvah. You have a mind, focus on learning teda, join, fuse with God's mind. You have a heart, Chesed, duch mils chasodim, tzdoke. Every part of the human body should be aligned with the Ramach Mitzvah Sesa, shal salis mitzvah sleisesa, the halachic man. We should be a walking shulchan aruch, basically. That's the kavon. To align ourselves to what the Ebesh to Zerotzen and Mitzvah says. What goes on in Hechada Elamis, in Elamis al Yenim, the Yichud of Zah Malchus. Or the Amshach of Atzilis and Tibiyah, or the connection between Keser 
and atik and arich to ak, or lifni at simtum, or lachri at simtum. This is not, this is, it happens, but it's not something we have to learn. So we have to be a isha loch. So here is a yesh lema bedera chefshev. And obviously everybody can feel to agree or disagree. So I said to myself, a light bulb went off. I said, one second here. I can't say that the Rebbe was referring to that, but it seems very uh, uncanny that the Rebbe Sicha, actually, of Lamed Hay, actually is a response to Rabbi Ashaber's uh, thesis. What is the Rebbe saying? The Rambam, your Rambam. The Rambam, you kochzechen. Not, I'm not quoting Chsidis. I'm not quoting Chabad. I'm not quoting the Alter Rebbe. I'm quoting the Rambam. The Rambam, as a Sefer of Halacha, talk about Isha Halacha, says clearly that just to be a Halachic man by following Mamala Kalalman in language of Chassidus, Motse is not enough. If you don't connect to any Motse, you can't perform Halacha properly because you can't change existence. So the Rambam in Sefer Halachas, not in Primis Atera, in Sefer Halachas, the Rambam is demonstrating the necessity for Ein and Motze, which is only in the domain, ultimately, of learning Primus Atera. So to say that we are only going to deal with Motze, Halacha Aleph, and not Halacha Beis, is eliminating, God forbid, a Yisaitis Vika fundamental principle in Halacha. Again, in Halacha, not in theology and in Primus Atera, in Halacha. Since I had the opportunity, to uh, write questions to the Rebbe was one of my schus in the merits when we wrote Fabrengen, we had the schus. Well, I wrote, I, and I have to tell you, I took advantage of it fully to the best of my ability because I felt he could write to the Rebbe, Daf Mishlep Vosmer, obviously. Whatever you can take out of the Rebbe. One of my regrets is I, I wanted to ask the Rebbe this question. I don't think the Rebbe would have answered, most likely would not have answered that he's responding to that. But I've written, obviously I wouldn't write such a question in that language. I always wanted to know whether the Rebbe's answer is also an answer to that approach. Regardless, it definitely is gishmak in my opinion, if I may say so myself, because it, it, it demonstrates something much more fundamental here. So the Rambam, therefore, the Rambam is not just a learning another shir yad and tog. It's actually, the Rambam is a bridge between Nigla and Primius, but it's all in the language of Nigla. It's all in the language of Loshan HaTeda, that Klal Yisrael learns, but it has carries in it, actually the Hechrich to learn Primis HaTeda. I'll share that a Chagav, a story that happened with me. When I was Bar Mitzvah, I went to Yechidus, and I went with my parents, and the Rebbe asked me what I'm uh, saying by the Bar Mitzvah, so I said, I'm saying a pilpul. So the Rebbe said, since you're Bar Mitzvah, 13, I'm going to ask you 13 questions. And uh, among the different questions, um, most of them were pretty simple. He asked me, the Rebbe asked me, which sugya? So I said, the menoch is the sugya of, uh, 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 that there's Laila loves man tefillin. Why you don't put on tefillin by night? So interesting what happened. The 12 questions are basic questions. One question, the Rebbe asked me, so why take is Laila, why take don't you put on tefillin by night? So there's two, day, there's two reasons. One is, Akzeir Sakos, or Yomam Yemimo. But the reason I'll be safe is because Lailo's mav loves man tefillinu. Because by night you can fall asleep and it'll be heschadas and it's a bazillion for the film. So we don't put on film by night. The Rebbe asked me the calling question. My birthday is Hey Tavis. So it's middle of the winter in New York. It's like, uh, what? The Rebbe looked out the window and said to me, Vifla zeger vet ba na vet nacht diteg. So what time does it get dark? So I said, uh, I don't know, five o'clock, five thirty. The Rebbe said, the Vesh Emetzer was Gate Shlof and Fim Dreisig. You know anyone that goes to sleep 5.30? I said, no. So he says, if I was all the Tater, Nishlozna, Eden, Legen, Tfilm, Biza, Sach, Spetter. So I said, Leit Plug, we can't just make Halak sein, for Sado Nacht, Macht in the Chlad, Nacht, Sado Menschen was Gate Shlof and Frier, Spetter, and in winter it's 5.30, up in the Zoom, it is 9.30. I basically said, that to start making distinctions when night begins. Every place in the world is different, the time zones. There's also summer and winter, and different people go to sleep. So the Teda makes so the Rebbe looked at me and went to the next question. Then he came back 
He says, did you think over the first question? We think it. So I started bulbing the same thing. I started saying the same thing. So the Rebbe said, you're telling me that the Tater is going to deprive a Jew for hours and hours of Shibud Aleva Ameach, of connecting the mind and the heart, which is the, 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 the Kavonant film, because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just because it got dark. There's hours and hours. He could have found a way to be Michalik. The Rebbe refused to accept my answer. And of course, for good reason. At the end of the Yechidah, the Rebbe says, So that's what I did. I started asking, I asked Rabbi Rosh Hashiva, then was, I was, by Mitzvah, was Rabbi Marlo, Allah Vashalom. Then there were others. I've asked the question by many people. And I get the same answer. Just recently, I think I came to the answer, which I think is just, a, a, it's really just the Chvivusa, the Milsa. I'm sharing it. I was learning in the Kisve Arizal. He says, why is Laila loves Mount Filantil? Not because you go to sleep. He asked the other, says the other way, why do you go to sleep by night? Hagufakash. Because by night is Durmita de Zah. In Ruchnius, when the sun sets, there's a certain slumber, a certain spiritual cosmic uh, sleep the world goes into. And we know the story with the Alter Rebbe that he would fall asleep Friday afternoon. Because he was Dugma Shalomayla, because that's a time where the world is going into a type of sleep. We say the same thing, Rosh Hashanah by night. Alter Rebbe, Nagel Sekedish, Simi Yudal. So the Rebbe, and this is just a thought, maybe the Rebbe was trying to emphasize to me that you can't really answer this Alpin Nigla. You're going to have to come to some Pnimius. So, Derech Agav, Adiyah, Danisht, I'm just sharing this. Getting back to this, so what do we come away with? That the Rambam, the Rambam in Loshan Nigla, in Loshan Halacha, as I said before, maybe the Rambam didn't even know Kabbalah, but he explains the idea in Halacha, that from Halacha Dika Asius, even in Briska Asius, or Asius from Yeshiva world, that what? In the Elam HaTera, as they call it, that you can understand that you must have levels of the Ebishter that's higher than Motzei. The language of the Rambam, Eine Motzei. Language of Chassidus, Seva of Kalalman, and even higher than that. That that is necessary in Halacha. Once the Rebbe made that, established that, in Tov Shalom and Hey, then you think about the Tarkon of the Rambam in Mem Dalad now, nine years later. And it's not a surprise, as I said, many times the Rebbe, nine years later, what do you have? The Rebbe comes out with a Tarkon. I remember it was Achim Shal Pesach. I actually wrote it up right the next day after Yontav because they wanted to print it in the newspaper. And the Rebbe was Magia immediately. The Tarkon, he came out. The idea of learning Rambam every day with the reasons Avis Achdus Hatera, he brings Kol Hatera and Achdus Yisro. So I went back to the Sikhs of how the Rebbe explains it. So perhaps, if you think about it, it is a true Rambam revolution. The Rebbe, of course, explaining that we're in the Dei Rashvi, Ikvis of the Meshicha, in Ikvis of the Meshicha, the Dei Rashvi, coming close to the Gu'ula, which means, after thousands of years of work, of Tehra Mitzvahs, of implementing and executing halacha in this Gashmi Zdika world, the world is close to the process of actually being transformed to be a Dira B'Tachtenim. So it makes total sense that to, call, to use the Rambam, to learn the Rambam every day, uniting all the Eden, which is a Yisod in, in preparing the world for Gula, Uniting Kol HaTeda, which is, prepares the world for Gula. And through what? Through a Rambam, whose whole Yisod is Halacha, is world global transformation. It's not just another Sefer. Not just a Sefer Kol Kol HaTeda Kula. The whole Sefer is coming to teach us how we go into Elam Haza, and we transform it with Motzei and Eine Motzei. With the Koyach of the Motzei Rishon, and the Koyach of Yalala Dasa Eine Motzei. So it fits completely into the theme of what Chassidus is. Adarab, even more so. Chassidus does it through, through Primus Atel. In a way, it's still a stickle of Maila Lamata. Here you're taking Halacha itself. Nigla itself, which is Asik in Yonim Elam The Alter Rebbe brings the Raya Mehemna, from the Raya Mehemna, in Simon Chavov and Agar Saikedish. The Raya Mehemna says there that the difference between Nigla and Primus is that Nigla is Etz Adas, Tevara, and Primus Atera is uh, Eitz Achaim, as the Alter Rebbe. How could you call Tera Eitz Adas? Has Rosholim. Tevara? 
So he says, because it's Asik and Tevara. When you learn Chsidis, when you learn Primis Atera, there's no Tevara. It's not talking about Taina Shal Sheker, and Reuven says this, and Shimon says that, and it's dealing with Tuma and Tara and Kedush and Chayl. Chsidis and the Primis Atera and Chsidis talk about Alakus. Everything is God. Yes, there's talk about Klippus, but Klippus is also the way godliness is concealed. What is Nigla the Tera Asikin? The nitty gritty of this world. Where a person comes and says, I tiny this and this one tiny is that. And you have dealing, is this a mutter or osir? Is it allowed or not allowed? Poshah dealing with physical reality. Which is why nigla is so important because it's the birur hatacht in the language of chassidus. The language of nigla, that's what halacha does. It gives clarity of what the Ebishter wants, what's allowed, what's not allowed. That's how we transform the world. So we're better to do it through, through, the, through, through the Rambam, the epitome and the personification of Nigla and the world of Nigla and demonstrating that that part of the Teda is also united with Primus Teda in its objective. So everyone who thought the Rambam, everyone said the Rambam, where's the Rambam? The Rambam is the farthest thing from Primus Teda. The Rambam is a rationalist, ish halacha, everything is halacha. Even the philosophies of the Rambam are apit seichel ha'anivre, etc., etc. Come the Rambam the Rebbe, especially in the first two prokim, first two halachas rather, in the general, the first four prokim. And then the end of the Rambam, and you look at it this way, you see a whole different reality. I don't know if you remember the first time the Rebbe made a siyum, was Akron Shab Pesach Mem Hey, that was the first cycle. The Rebbe made the seer on Yud Alef Nisim. And he had the Rambam with him. If you remember, he took out the Rambam, he opened it, was reading it. In the rare times, the Rebbe read inside. And I remember when the Rebbe was reading, Mola Ares Deus Hashem Kamayim Le'em Chasim. He was like learning it like you learn with children. Every word, Mola. And the Rebbe touched it like he touched with Rashi. And that's what the Rebbe said. Mola Ares Deus Hashem Kamayim Le'em Chasim is transformation. Not just a Gilea Lekus, not just Am Shoch that the world becomes kamayim layom mechasim. So what more appropriate way as one of the shlovim, one of the steps toward geula, which is the whole purpose of your futzah minasach and chutzah, is to demonstrate how all is there, right there, in Teda, in Nigla, in Halacha, in the Rambam. So we look at it that way, the learning of the Rambam and the cycle of learning, uh, the, the daily learning of the Rambam, no matter what way you go, whether it's the three prokim a day, one perik, or misefer uh, mitzvahs, is all part of the process. Islapshus in nigla, in aloche, of bringing the geula, which of course is the whole matora of the day rashvi. It's not just a night at takon. In that context, it takes on a whole different meaning. It means that the Rebbe, like in many, in all areas, Everything that ever introduced was all about preparing this world, the finishing steps, the finishing touches of, as the Rebbe said, Tzuputz in the Kneplach, or already Tzugipuz the Kneplach. I want to add one thing, the interesting thing that, uh, since it's Indian and Rambam, in Tov Shemem Dalad, that same year actually, before Pesach, the Rebbe said something in the Fabrengen, I think it was uh, Mishpotim Mem Dalad, yeah. The Rebbe said that um, he was talking about learning Tanya on the radio, actually. Around that time, the Rebbe would speak about uh, Rabbi Weinberg, Rabbi Shalom would learn Tanya on the radio. The Rebbe would speak about the significance of that. So he was talking about technology, radio, that it's really called to say that it was created by any Umaza. You can use it for the wrong things, just like you can use Zov, gold for the wrong things. But will God destroy his world because some people are using it the wrong way? And he's explaining how technology is a koyach adir, the Ebrish that implanted in the world. There's a sikh mishpotim mandal that was magiat to a lot of his sophists. One of the things that Rebbe said there, he was talking about the Gemara in Sanhedrin, that um, not, nothing has shown that anything can be, can be created by anybody but the Ebishter. You can't say something's created by Lumaz. But then he brought what it says in Sanhedrin, we see, I'm a chashif. There are those, a kishuf, 
not magician, not a chizus anayim, not a sleight of hand, that actually have the power, even a kedibra, that they through they can create something. So the Rebbe spoke then and said, as zman There's no more kishuf. There's no more shadim and no more kishuf That's what the Rebbe said. I remember, I said, one second. That's a big chiddush. Where does it say such a thing? We know in Sefer Zechreinus from the Friedrich Rebbe, it says even the time of Baal Shem Tev, there was a shin dalads. So we're, not that the Rebbe could say the chiddush, but where's the, what's the yisod of it? So then I thought that maybe the Rebbe was referring to since that Ambam Paskins in Halacha, he writes that he mevatled the whole union of Kishuf and Shindalids and so on as being Shtusim. He writes clearly that's nonsense. So the Rebbe was saying that since the Rambam wrote that, well, after the Rambam, there's no more such a thing. So I asked the Rebbe, I wrote to the Rebbe at Satan, and the Rebbe answered, yes, lafushim is as much as possible. There's still a machlekes. Before the Rambam, the Rambam would say there isn't, and others say there is. But lafushim is as much as possible. Yes, layman, you could say after the Rambam, there's no more. So therefore, everyone agrees there's no more. The Rambam says it for his reasons. But I threw into the Rebbe a question which I wanted to really get an answer. I did not get the answer. I had heard once that the Rebbe said, you know, the famous machlekes between the Rambam and the Maral. The Rambam says in many places, hu hamada, hu yidei, hu yidur. Talk about Das. That's how Elokus is mislabish in Das. And hu hamada, hu yidei, hu yidur. He's the knower, he's the knowledge, and he's the knowy, everything. We have a yidei, lechutz atzma. You know there's a table, you know there's a chair. It's not within you, it's outside of you. Comes the Maral, famous Maral, and says, what do you mean? The Ebesh is not defined by Das. He's beyond Das. And Chesidus is metavich in Tanya, in a number of places, in Pedic Beis, in Hago, and other places, that the Rambam is talking about Das and Atzilus. Das as it relates to existence. There, the Ebesh is one with it. But if you talk higher than Ishtalshlus, he's higher than Das. That's the Tivuch. So I once heard that the Rebbe said in Afabrengen before the Nasiyas, before Tov Shin Yud, that perhaps you can say, perhaps you can say that the Rambam was, was Chesidus says, Shama is Gvura, Hillel is Chesed, and that's why Hillel's halachas are more lekula, and Shama is Gvura, is more leisur, lechumra. So perhaps you could say by the Rambam, that's what I heard once, I don't know if it's accurate, that the Rambam was the world of Chochmah. In Elam HaChochmah is Nechayach Kishuf and Shindalitz. Chochmah is not shameful such a thing. It comes from a world that's beyond Chochmah, beyond Seichel. Since the Rambam is talking from the world of Teira, Seichel HaTeira, Seichel HaTeira, Shtip Nishta Zazach. That perhaps, that's why the Rambam says what he says. So I wanted to get an issue from the Rebbe on that. But the Rebbe never responded to that. I'm just pointing that out. We could say possibly, if, the, that if it's true that the Rebbe did say that, that the Rambam does talk in the world of Das, Leida, Sheyesha, Motzei edition, Yalala Das, Shehu Eine Motzei. So he's also hinting to, even Das can come to a point of understanding that Ebesh is higher than Motzei. And both together create that transformation that I was describing earlier. So, so here we are, the 39th Sium, the beginning of the 40th. And um, when you think of it in the context of the Rebbe as a Nasi, Nasi Ador, Nasi of Chabad, and continuing, obviously, the goal of your Futsu Maynasech Chutza, to bring the Mayanis of Chsidis, of Primis Ater Chutza. So some places Chutza includes Migla Dater, because of Fierech, Primis, it's Chutza. Not Chaz Shalom Chutza in a negative way, it's the, the Chutz of the Pnim. You need both together. It's a neshama and a guf. Neshmosa daraisa, gufa daraisa. That the Rebbe through the Rambam, of course, including everything else that the Rebbe was megala, machadish, and innovated and, and introduced us to, brings together the ultimate joining and fusion of primis and nigla, of neshama and guf in teda, and of course neshama and guf also in our aveda, which is the ultimate goal. And the Rebbe says that the birunim, 
It's time of Aveda Sabirudim. We finished the Aveda Sabirudim. What does it essentially mean? That halacha has done its job. That the halachas that were kept and upheld for generations and generations have accumulated because we believe everything continues on. Chaz Rashaam, nothing ends. It accumulated to the point that it's ready to erupt. In the words of the Rebbe, one more act. In the words of the Rebbe, quoting the Rambam, one more Maisa Echad, Dibur Echad, Machshav Achas, Kiba Machriya Kola Elam Kulei, Lekaf Schus, and maybe Chua Vatsola to him, to the person, and to Kola Elam Kulei. The Gula Mitis Vashlem. So we should be Zeche, the Schus of this Siyam Rambam, and so many others happening around the world. And the Rebbe's Takona has been spreading more and more. It still needs work. We still need a Molaris Deus Hashem Kaimaim Layam Mechasim. That we should talk and be able to take all these halachas, including, of course, the Rebbe quoting the halacha of the Rambam, only in the Rambam, Steve Peter Kess of Hilchus Malachim, to reach even B'nai Neach, even the non Jews, the way you can reach them, that which is Shaykh to Sheva Mitzvahs did, did who, the things that relate to them. And that's what the Rambam brings at the end, in halacha, in the end of uh, Sef, Mishnah Teira, that la, he doesn't just talk about Eden. Talks about all the people will be will be lo yisa kol elam el ladasas Hashem bovad. Then he says that the Eden will be chachomim v'nevenim, and ultimately mola aritz deis Hashem kamaim leyam mechasim is kol aritz, not just the Eidush aritz, not just the Jews, the entire world. And hopefully now in this tukufa where we're going through our own disruptions, and everything is a ayin beemtza between a yesh and a yesh, that we should finally be zeicher with this sima rambam. Going into Arboim Shana. That's when the Eden go into Eretz Yisrael. Lev Ladas, Ayan Lires, that we're ready to actually march in together with the Rebbe, together with the Rambam, together with all, all the Neshamas of all those that were Mesa Nefesh and gave their lives in transforming this world and really appreciate this Rambam revolution that the Rebbe initiated. And I'm sure there's much more depth and many more levels that when you really, Ma'ayan, you can discover more reasons. And at the end of the day, there are things maybe we'll never understand. That's how it is. But what we could understand, we tried to understand in appreciating how the Rambam is a, a, a part and parcel and in a, an integral part of the big plan of the Deir Ashvi of finally bringing the Shechina Do Lamata Lamata Asara Tvachim. You should have it in that full Dira B'Tachtenim, the Gula Amitis V'Ashlema. And together with everyone, we should be able to march to Shalai Mira Kedish and Eretzak Kedish and Shalai Mira Kedish, Beis Amidus Ashlishi, with the Rebbe and are leading us. Thank you very much. And should be uh, only Besudas Tevis, and everyone should be well and healthy. And we should take a march to the Gula even before um, the, the three weeks end, or even before this weekend. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Rabbi Jacobson, um, for your words. Very enlightening, and a chizuk in learning Rambam. Um, firstly, a big mazel tov to Rabbi um, Kievman, uh, the birth of a granddaughter today. Um, the Vad Ere Choim, those people put together the big Gimel Tamos um, Fabrengen and also put together a website with a lot of resources for Limud Rambam. I just posted in the chat, urbacham.com slash Rambam, which um, please check it out. And again, also the uh, Rambam Press, make use of it if you can. Um, also a reminder that Amir Tashem, Tuesday night, 8.30, um, Hilchas Beis Abkhira, will post a link on the WhatsApp Amir Tashem from Rabbi Yosef Keller. If you want to be mishtatif in the Itzos of this event or the Gimel Tamos, Please um, do that, uh, donate.basemenachem.org.uk um, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you everyone for being Mishnatev and thank you for the Al Redeners of some Geret and Uvgeb and Tumazel. Together we should celebrate Bias and Mashiach and the Chzemit and Revan take from Mayad. Good night and all the best.